Yes, I have to admit, this is probably one of the most beautiful gradients that I have ever created as a designer for over 14 years. Just look at it, it is so beautiful. It is so buttery smooth. If I was in this gradient, I would honestly just cradle myself, I would close my eyes and I would just let it just take me around. Anyways, yes, this is all created within Figma. Well, I'm gonna walk you guys through step by step on how to create all this. Let's get right into it, guys. Oh, and by the way, if you do enjoy these types of videos, make sure to smash up those like buttons. Yes, smash it up so you can let me know to make more videos like this and it will also help the channel grow as well. Now, obviously, I wanna give you guys a little bit of context. So, as you know that I released my Figma Masterclass, that was done really, really well. The next course that I'm about to launch, well, I will be launching is around product and UX design. And it's sort of a building block, right? So I teach you use how to tools. And then once you learn how to use the tools, I'm teaching you all the core primary skills, which is like business strategy, product strategy, thinking like a UX designer, thinking like a product designer, and sort of piecing everything together for you. Now, obviously this course is gonna be a lot more technical, a little bit more complex, and I want to have a visual brand that, I don't know, is nicer to look at, a little bit more appealing. It's just, I don't know, it just looks good, right? That's what I want to achieve. So I was playing around with these animated uh, mesh gradients that I designed from scratch, and a lot of you guys on Instagram were asking me to create a tutorial around it. So here I am, creating a tutorial for you guys, giving you guys free education to help you become a legendary designer. So let's get right into it. Now, this is the exact process that I took. Now, I'm not gonna glorify the process. I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly how I did it because that's how you're gonna learn. So, the first thing I did was I went onto Google and I found this beautiful website, right? So, I went to Google and I went to, and I searched up mesh gradients. I wanted to have a reference point of something that I can sort of use as a reference point. So, I clicked on the first link and I found this beautiful website and I was trying to find one of the mesh gradients that had the colors that I utilize in my own personal brand, which is the purple and a bit of the magenta looking color. So I went ahead and downloaded this one, I copied it, and I pasted it over onto Figma. Now, obviously you can't use a JPEG or a PNG to animate inside Figma. You need to create it yourself, and you need to create everything as a separate shape, and then you utilize Smart Animate to create the animations. So what I did was I flipped this image onto this uh, horizontal axis, as you can see over here, and then I chucked it into an artboard, pretty much. Job done, I'm kidding, guys. That This is where I started to sort of play around with how do I want to actually create this mesh gradient from scratch. So I locked the layer, and then I utilized the pen tool. The pen tool, if you haven't used it before, allows you to create these wonky, beautiful custom shapes that every designer loves, right? Because they're so abstract. Now, this is how I create it. So I'm gonna delete these lines and we're gonna go ahead and create this from scratch. So I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna mask out all the different shapes that create this gradient. So where the color ends, right? That's what I define as a shape. So I'm just gonna go click left on my keyboard. So I'm just gonna click left, right? And then I'm gonna sort of draw a line over here and then I'm gonna hold down that left button, right? And then I'm gonna drag my mouse to create that contour, as you can see over here. Now, with that in mind, you can see now, once I've dragged this anchor point out so far, it will always sort of help me keep this corner really well rounded and real balanced. But that's not what I want. I wanna be able to snap this point straight up over here. So what I can do is I can hover over onto this anchor point, as you can see, click it, I can delete it on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna hold down Shift, to snap a straight line all the way to the top of this corner, right? And then I'm gonna click right onto this anchor point over here where we first started, and then I'm gonna drag to create that contour, as you can see right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create all the separate shapes. So I'm gonna have one around here, right? For the peachy looking color, and then around for the yellowish looking color, I'll create another shape. And then for the cyan, light blue looking color, I will create another shape over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this clip and you can see how I create it. Perfect. So now that I've got all the different shapes, I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a bit of color. So I'm gonna hold down Command on my keyboard and I'm gonna directly select the shapes that I want. I'm gonna remove the stroke and I'm gonna change the fill from solid to linear. 
and I'm going to go ahead and create the first color gradient over here. So I'm going to have the blue move into a bit of that magenta looking uh, purple. So I'm going to go ahead and give it that color. And I'm just going to quickly loosely add these colors in. I'm not too precious about it right now. I'm going to go ahead and select this one. Looking good. Job done. That's how I created it. I'm kidding guys. So what we're going to do from here is I'm going to go ahead and start to create this blurry effect. So what we want to do is I'm going to click on this frame, hit enter my keyboard to select all the layers inside. I'm going to go and hit plus on the effects and then I'm going to change drop shadow to layer blur. And then I'm going to bump this up to around like 200. You can see that it's probably a little bit too much, but if I reduce it, you can see that it's a little bit too... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bump it up to maybe like 140, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these shapes a little bit bigger to fill in the gaps because you can see there's a little bit of a white, um, a white background coming through these shapes. So I'm going to make these a lot bigger. I'm going to make the purple one, uh, the blue one a little bit bigger as well. And I'm going to make the yellow one a little bit bigger as well. And you can see that it's starting to come along. So now I'm going to also move this shape to sort of meet the contour a little bit better. There we go. You can see it's starting to come along. Now the second thing that you need, now the next thing that you actually need to go ahead and do is you want to start to define some of the colors and you need to go ahead and duplicate, right? So I'm going to hit Command D on the shapes and I'm going to move it to the top because I want to set this one as pass through over onto overlay. And when you set colors on overlay as a layer setting, you can see that it starts to create some of these really nice blended modes, right? So if you play around with overlay, uh, lighten, soft light, darken, it creates some really special, unique colors. So if I go to darken, it creates something a little bit darker. You go to lighten, it creates a little bit of a lighter hue. If you go to overlay, I like that because it creates a lot of saturation in the specific colors. So from here, you can start to play around and there is no right or wrong in this, uh, in this sort of uh, process. What I did next was I started to realize that some of the colors looked a little bit muted, right? So I wanted to make sure if I wanted to make it more saturated, I want to duplicate it and then set it to overlay as well. So you can see some of the colors, the yellow uh, more specifically, and the uh, magenta, the purples, and the bl dark blues are becoming a lot more saturated, and they look a little bit more vibrant. So from here, you need to just start to play around with it and see what sort of effects that you can create. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue playing with this a little bit more. All right, so here we go. We've got something a little bit more, a little bit nicer. Obviously, we can play around with this further, but I don't want to be spending too much time tinkering around with the mesh gradient. So once you've got something that you like, what you want to do then is duplicate the actual artboard, right? So you've got two of them. And because the second one has all, has all the same layers, we can start to move these colors around, right? And this is going to create the animated effect. So you can just create some random shapes. You can even lighten some of the colors if you really wanted to. And you can make it a little bit larger as well. And then you can move this purple one a little bit so you can actually make it larger. You can also turn it a little bit. You can move it down a little bit. And then you've also got the blue, right? So the blue, you can sort of see, you might want to move it to the side. You also want to move this one down a little bit, turn a little bit, and the and the goal is to try, sort of create the animation that you have in mind. How do you want these colors to move around? So as you can see, right now, the purple and the dark blue is sort of moving along the bottom of the actual, uh, the actual board. So when we actually go ahead and link these up with the prototype, as you can see like this, all I have to do is set this to after, after delay to uh, one millisecond, so practically instantly. And I want to set this to smart animate. And I want to ch change 300 milliseconds to maybe 2500. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and select the second artboard and set an animation back to the original because this will create the loop effect. So after delay, one millisecond, smart animate to 2500 milliseconds. Oh, and by the way, I did notice a few things that I really wanted to fix up before I end this video. When we make those transitions, you want to make sure that it is easing in and out, right? So you want to change that to both the actual easing, 
Why? Because when you go ahead and preview the animation, you want to make sure that there is no sort of jagged looking effect. You want to make sure there will be glimpses of it because Figma sometimes renders Im uh, colors, uh, doesn't really render it uh, butter smooth, but you'll notice that it doesn't stop. The animation doesn't stop, the animation continues to proceed and sort of flows and it looks very nice. So that's the effect that I wanted to still include in this video because I know for a fact that I could not have left you with a jagged stopping animation. That even makes sense. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video very soon. What the hell? What the